this is Tina welcome back to my channel so following on really from our mass making when we did the yo-yos um, I wanted to come on and have a bit of a play I said in that video that I had never really done any yo-yos in a more vintage style um, so I thought well <laughs> we're all stuck in let's just um, have a bit of a play around and do some of those now, whilst I'm actually going to be doing those as well, I thought I would quickly share these stays on inks. Now, I bought these a couple of weeks ago, or a few weeks ago actually now, and I have used the Royal Purple a couple of times. I haven't used these two at all. Uh, I literally have just taken them out of the cellophane, um, but I thought this would be a nice project, hopefully, to use them on. So we're going to use those in a moment. And what I've done, I've bought along, this was just some... Um, I think it was like a pillow case and you can probably see it had a sort of swirly mottled -y pattern on it so what I've done I've turned it inside out so it's even plainer um, on the back it was in a sort of beigey ivory colour anyway but it's obviously even plainer on the back and I thought we could um, you know try making some yo-yos from that and then I've also got some of my son's old shorts so I've just chopped <laughs> chopped a leg off um, and I thought we could have a go at making a couple with that, so or with, with those. So I'm just going to chop this down a little bit further to make it slightly, slightly better to fit on screen. Like that. So, I mean, you know, hopefully these are going to work. I mean, obviously these were sort of more chino type fabric, so it's much thicker. I don't know, you know, for sure how these are going to be, but... Let's just trim them down and just trim them in half so that we can then work a little bit easier with them. But yeah, I mean, I don't know how this fabric will be because it is a bit thicker. But having said that, I have actually made the yo-yos with um, velvet fabric before. I mean, you probably or possibly have seen my tutorial of my puffed yo-yo flowers. Um, but I've also made them not puffed, you know, in fact, there's one there. Um, this one is not a puffed yo-yo. This is just using some sort of velvet, more like upholstery fabric. So, I mean, it is possible to make the yo-yos even with the fabrics that are slightly thicker. So don't be deterred if your fabric's not, you know, not as thin as, you know, what we used previously. So what I thought we could do is have a bit of a play with stamping on some of the fabrics and make a couple of yo-yos with the stamped fabrics. Then we'll probably make some with the plane as well. Um, but we'll just have a play around and sort of see see what they're like. So this is that gorgeous royal purple, which I have used, as I say, on a couple of things so far. So I've just got my crafty individuals, um, like vintage letter type stamp here. And I'm just going to stamp around onto that fabric. And what I'm going to do, I think, is try and stamp in lines. And of course, you know, this does not have to be perfect or too precise. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn the fabric round and do it like the opposite way, if that makes sense. Because obviously I'm going to be cutting these out into sort of circles. So we'll just do them like that. And then hopefully I'm going to have a bit of a, you know, variety of text going one way. Rather than it all just going the same way. Hopefully it will kind of run to the centre, if that makes sense. So that's the scripty stamp. Now you can probably see, I'm just going to show you a bit of that purple stamp on some paper. <clears throat> just to give you an idea of how it looks just on some white paper I mean as you can see it's pretty dark um, I mean actually it looks better in some lights than others but it's pretty dark so um, it's you know it's quite a nice one it's not sort of a bright purple it really is quite a dark um, I don't know, more like an amethyst type colour. So it's really nice. So I'm just going to put that stamp to one side <clears throat> and I'll put this fabric piece to one side. 
Now the next one here is this saddle brown. Now I have to say I have had this colour before years and years and years ago and I mean like you know 12 years ago um, but it obviously had long since dried up and you know I'd used it and used it and used it in the days when I did card making so I hope that I love it just as much as I did. I'm just going to now I'm going to use this crafty individual stamp now and I think actually what I might do is stamp this one on a block. Oh, please excuse my state of my blocks, just disgusting. So I'm just going to press that all over. And to be honest, I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but if I stamp on fabric, you know, a new stamp pad is really beneficial because you know, the fabric obviously really does like soaking the ink up. So if you've got a new stamp pad, you know, ink pad, and you may want to stamp on fabric, probably do it sooner rather than later. Certainly once your ink pad goes a bit dry, it's not going to be as good on the fabric. Okay. And then again, I'm just going to show you a little bit of that on the white page. But I mean, isn't that glorious on there? What a gorgeous colour. So I'll just stamp a little bit in the corner. Hopefully you can see that there. So it's a really lovely colour, isn't it? I don't know really. I mean, they've called it saddle brown. I guess, I guess it is a saddle brown. Um, but just beautiful. How much do you love that stamp, I have to say. Oh. Really nice, isn't it? So I'll just pop that now to one side and then do the final one. So let me just pop this stamp back in the packet. I'm still trying to be very well behaved and look after my stamps really well. Well, as well as I can. Obviously you can see I have torn the packet, but. So I'm just going to use my, my old favorite now because of course I couldn't resist. So, that actually was that way up um, this time. I might actually, I might just stamp it down on there. So again, what I'm going to do is I will just ink, you know, and again, I mean, this is brand new straight out of the cellophane. So hopefully it should be really nice and inky. No excuses. So I'm just going to pop that down there just press that down. I mean, obviously that foam has long since lost its stick and you can probably see, I mean, oops. I mean, that's picked up some black because obviously I have stamped this stamp so many millions of times with different colored um, inks. So it's kind of ingrained on the stamp now, unfortunately. So that's that one. And again, I'm just going to stamp it on this piece of paper just to show you how that looks. Oops. I mean, isn't that just gorgeous? Lovely, isn't it? So I might just do a bit more stamping in one or two spots and I might just then extend it down here just like that. And, you know, this really does not matter at all what this is like because these are just going to be cut into those circles. So, you know, it really doesn't have to be too precise at all. And then I'm just going to pull those shorts in. Oops. So I'll just pull those in. Again, as you can see, I really should have ironed these before, before coming on to do this, but I'm so rubbish. I just don't iron clothes so again I'm just going to just rough stamp this rather than use the block I just do find the block it slows you down quite a lot and um, you know if you're not really going to be needing a precise image 
I don't really see the need for the block. It's, you know, it's like overkill. I don't really need it. Okay, so there's that one. I love how that looks on that fabric, I must say. And obviously, as I say, this is like a chino type fabric. So that's that's the colour it is as well. It's like, you know, traditional chino type colours. I've got that saddle brown. So let's do a bit of that saddle brown with this scripty stamp. And again, I'm just going to rough stamp these scripty bits. It's just so lovely, this gorgeous colour. I mean, it probably isn't showing up that brilliantly on camera, to be honest, but it does look, um, well, the <laughs> saddly brown, I guess, is, is the colour it does look. It's got an almost like green sort of tinge to it. It's really nice because I do like my, um, I think it's called timber brown, but it's nice to have a, a different one too. So I've got my purple here and um, just put my other stamp on the floor. Let me just pull that back in. And we'll just do a little bit on here in the purple. And again, you know, we're just trying to get a little bit of pattern on that fabric so it's not completely plain. So, you know, really doesn't matter how that pattern's looking. I know probably lots of people are watching feeling quite horrified at my stamp in there, but honestly, <laughs> it's not going to matter. Oh, she says, trying to convince everybody. Right, I'm really covered in ink now. So I... I have to apologise for that. Okay, right, let's put those away. I'm just going to check that I'm in frame for this. And I'm not now, you know, out of frame completely. Right, so let's grab our scissors and cut out a couple of bits. So, for instance, this one here, we'll just take a little section like that. And I didn't stamp the back of this one, so we can do a plain one as well. And then we can see, you know, which one we like best, really. So, got those. And then we'll just take a little section of this chino-type fabric. Like that. Oh, my gosh, that thread is just going to be not really usable, isn't it? It's... Uh, that's not a good start to the to the video. And then we'll just take this bit here, which is scripty. I'm just making it manageable chunks here so that we can then, you know, cut our um oh, cut our circles. Sorry, I did just nudge the camera. I'm just going to check that I'm I'm still okay that I'm still in frame, so hold on two moments. Oh gosh, did I knock it? I don't know. I think I did knock it, but whether I knocked it out of place, I don't know. Right, hopefully it's still okay. So I'm just going to again cut some little circles from there. I mean, kind of wishing really that I'd had um, some white fabric and tea dyed it because that was really, I think, would have been more ideal. But, you know, we just are going, you know, with what we've got to hand, aren't we? So, just need to get rid of that pink. Okay. So, we'll just cut our circles out okay I mean this is also a great way to get rid of you know scraps of fabric and things because obviously 
unlike some other flowers, you know, like where you use strips, I mean, a little bit of fabric goes a really, really long way on those. Where the yo-yos, they're slightly, I think, more extravagant on the fabric. Um, you know, so if you're looking to use up quite a bit from your scrap box, I think the yo-yos are quite a good, a good one to do. Right. Okay, and let's do a plain one, and then we might do a plain one in the chino fabric as well, actually. So, just trim that one down. Oops. Okay. Okay. And of course, don't forget that you can always ink your fabrics so again that's if I can actually locate my ink so hold on a moment although I had cleared my desk obviously what's happened is I have now done a couple more videos which has resulted in more mess being piled on the desk so oops, no no clearer now well it, I mean it's slightly clearer but oh, things are now getting reburied Right, let me just see whether my vintage photo is up here in my pile. Hold on. Yep, it was. Okay. Never be too tidy. It's when you put things away, that's when the pro problems really start. <laughs> okay, so I've got this one. Now, I'm going to have it right side up, I think, and we'll just ink around a little bit, sort of more just around the edges, really because obviously the bulk of that circle, i.e. you know, the centre, that's going to be the underneath of the flower. So you don't need to go round that really. Okay, so that's that one. Should we ink up a couple of these? Let's ink up this one, I think. I'm not going to ink up all of them, but just a couple just to um you know just experiment really and see what looks good and what doesn't so finally let's do this one Oops. Okie dokie, so that's our inked ones and our non-inked ones. So, as I said, I had prepared my threads that are now all knotted up together. Well, they're, they're okay at the moment, but they certainly will be if I'm not careful. So we'll just go in here. So, and we're obviously just making these exactly the same as we made our ones in the mass making. I've made these all quite big strangely enough I don't know why I don't know why but for some reason I did make these ones all quite big so anyway it doesn't matter but just sort of an observation suddenly there that I thought oh why have I made all of these quite big ones I didn't make any small ones no idea no idea why just that's that's how it was I assume because the fabric that I started with was in sort of larger rectangles so so that's how they went then okay okay right let me just get that cut that thread off could have just probably tucked it into the yo-yo but that just seemed a bit fiddly to do. So that's that one. And then we'll just pull that tight. 
the other thing is the tighter that you pull these I should just mention the tighter you pull these the more um, bunched up fabric you're going to have in the middle so depending on how you like yours to be you know you may prefer them like not pulled so tight if that makes sense and really I should have said that in the mass making and just it didn't really occur to me until just now but yeah just something to be a little bit aware of there so I got a button here that came off of the shorts actually which I could just pop that one on there oh, oh I'm quite liking the vintage ones I don't know honestly why I why I had never done a, vin a vintage yo-yo before I had just always done the bright coloured ones. Uh, I, yeah, I have no idea why. For some reason, they just to me were calling to the bright coloured, bright coloured papers, but uh, papers, fabrics. Um, but actually, this little vintage type coloured one looks equally cute. So. Just, you know, double double stitch that button and those holes again, she says. Oh, I'm loving those vintage ones. Now I'm just like, why had I never done that before? Do you sometimes just do that and think, why why have I never done that before? Oh, I don't know. Right, so Knock that one off. I just kind of do it like as many times as I think that particular fabric needs the, the knot. So there we go. Oh, isn't that so cute? I love that vintage one. So that's that one. Let's do, let's do that lovely rustic -y pink one with the chino fabric and see how that one turns out. Oh, I think we're going to have lots of fun during this period of um, no going out. We've got no excuse to to not be in crafting. There we go. I mean, this definitely is obviously thicker, you know, much thicker fabric. But I mean, as I say, I have done that one, or you know, I have done them with the velvet before. So, you know, if it works with the velvet it definitely should be okay with this this thicker sort of fabric I'm trying to think whether i've ever done them with denim i don't know whether i have i maybe have but if i have it was obviously a long time ago so it's not not coming to mind at all Okay, nearly done. Last little bit. Okay. So again, I, I mean, I just like to just poke my finger in to sort of spread the, spread the puff, puff out, so as it becomes a proper circle. Oh, that's so cute, isn't it? And I'm just wondering whether for this one, just like thinking of different centres, and I just happen to have this little flower here sat beside me. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to just knock this one off at the back. bet my glue gun's not plugged in. Oh. Let me just flick my glue gun off on. Let me flick that on. And I'll have to wait a couple of minutes for it to heat up. But I'm thinking this one, I'm just going to glue this in there as the centre. 
How cute does that look? So I'll just pop them, I'll pop this here so I don't forget to do that in a minute. So, I mean, again, you can just play around with all different things in the centres. You don't have to use buttons. You don't have to use the same old stuff. You know, you can just mix it up and um, try out different things. In fact, I've just spotted something else over, over in my tin that I'm going to try for the next one. Again, who knows? It may work, it may not. But let's do this one with the swirls. Oh, oh no. This is with the text and the like fleur de lis type pattern. It's not a fleur de lis, I don't think, but it's that type of thing. So we just come in like that. Oh, it's so nice to see the sun shining, I must say. It's uh, really nice very windy today well it's not very windy compared to sometimes because obviously sometimes you can really hear it can't you up here so it can't be that windy but I was just looking out and I could see some trees like really looking like they were blowing a lot around but I guess um it can't be that windy or else we'd all be hearing it wouldn't we in here obviously I haven't been outside but I will go out and just get a bit of fresh air at the um, lunchtime. I will just go and sit in the garden for a bit. You know, so as I do get a bit of fresh air and get outside. Whilst I send the children out to go on the trampoline for a bit. I will um, have a cup of tea, I think, outside. So, right, there's that one. And what I just spotted was this butterfly, and I just thought, actually, I wonder how that would look. I'm not sure it looks as good as I had hoped, actually, but let's just ink that up. I wonder if we could actually stitch through that and have that stitched on there. Ah, oh, maybe I don't like that as much as I'd hoped, you know. Right, let's just pull that through. Like that. So I think it's going to be a button after all for this one. So let me just pull in my bag of buttons. Let's just have a look. No, 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 no. Uh, I mean, that's quite drab, isn't it? But, hang on. I could do with a sort of, um, you know, like antique bronzy gold one. But they tend to be, more often than not, the ones with like a shank on them, which I don't necessarily want. Mm, it's a bit brown. That annoying. Uh, what's this one? Uh, that's not quite. Not quite right, but can you see the colour? You know, would look really nice, wouldn't it? But yeah, more often than not, those gold type buttons often are the ones that, you know, actually have like the shanks on them, which obviously then are not quite so great. Although, I can glue that in. That's a perfect one, I think, for that. So I'm just going to knot this off. Like that. So if you were to use your buttons with the little shanks, then what I'd say is leave your, your gap like that. And then your shank, when you, you know, use your hot glue or your fabric glue or something, can push into that space, if that makes sense. So that's all I'm going to do there. So let's just get my glue done. And then all I'm going to do is apply the glue straight to here. Oops. 
maybe it's not been on quite long enough I'll just have to leave that for a couple more minutes so let's just do one more let's do the plain one shall we shall we do the plain one or shall we do this one Decisions, decisions. Oops, okay. Oh my gosh, come on. Now this is why I threaded those um, <laughs> needles before coming on because I thought, oh, how awful for you to all have to experience watching me trying to thread the needle. Still haven't succumbed to putting my glasses on to be doing this and I really should because... This is a long way from my face. I mean, my arms are, you know, pretty far away from my face. So, uh, yeah, really, I, I mean, if I was doing this not on film, I'd have this miles closer to me. Miles closer to my eyes. Oh, quickly want to say something else, in fact, and I'm going to mention this in another video perhaps coming up because just in case I, you know, don't have that many people tune into this, I must apologise. I've heard other people say this of late, that they've noticed about comments, that they're getting these comments held for review, what they called held for review. I mean, I don't really know what that means, to be honest, but I had not noticed other people, I've heard them say that they've noticed because they've maybe like uploaded a video and had like no comments. Well, I haven't had any videos with no comments, but I did have, um, you know, one or two videos with hardly any comments, if you see what I mean. So I was looking around just, well, it didn't really even occur to me to look in the held for, for review, held for review thing. So I was just looking around thinking, oh, you know, that's strange. And I noticed loads of comments in this place called Held for, Rev Held for Review. That's a bit of a tongue twister in itself. Um, yeah, I have no idea why those comments have been put in there. I don't really know. I started going through them just on my iPad. And, oh, that's quite nice, isn't it? I um, started going through them just on my iPad. But to be honest... Obviously, that was taking a long time because you have to kind of swipe, then say, do you want to unhold this for a review kind of thing? Or you know, it might have said, do you want to approve this or something? That would be better English, wouldn't it? It would make more sense. Um, yeah. So then you say yes. And then it goes back off, I assume, to the original video that it was made, if that makes sense. So... There are something, I think it said like 300 comments in there. And when I looked down, like scrolled right the way down, there were comments from like three months ago in there. So I have no idea, as I say, why they were even in there in the first place. I don't know. Maybe this is all to do with the COPA stuff. I don't know. Um, but I can only apologise to people who, you know, I mean, I'm pretty rubbish at getting to comment comments in a timely manner anyway. But I like to think I'm slightly better than three months. Um, so I I apologise for that. And also, I don't know now how long that's going to take me to put them in, you know, to an approved status, if you see what I mean. Because if I have to do them one at a time, that's going to take a very, very, very long time. I will try and do it via my laptop rather than my iPad. And I'm hoping that's going to be much quicker. However, I still, I'm not sure that they're definitely going to come up, if you see what I mean, where I can see them and reply to them, or whether they're only going to go then to the video that they were made a comment on, if that makes sense. So I do apologise if your comment is in there. As I say, there were about 300, so, you know, there's a lot of comments in there. Um, and I can only apologise, obviously, for not having seen them. I don't know whether this is something that's going to continue happening now or whether that was like, well, it, obviously it wasn't a one-off because it's been like comments here, there and everywhere for like three months, obviously. But I don't know. 
anyway, so I can only apologise. And whilst we're talking about comments, I must just quickly say I probably will not reply to comments for the giveaway. Um, the only reason being is obviously, you know, being a giveaway, you're sort of hoping that pretty much everybody is going to comment. Um, so I just will not, I'm afraid, be able to reply to everybody or anything else. So I will be reading those comments because obviously I've asked you to comment on the styles that you like, which is really nice for me to know. But I won't reply and um, that's a struggle for me because I like chatting, obviously, you know. So I will be kind of, oh, so do I, or, you know, oh yes, that's my favourite song. But I'm going to refrain from doing that because once I do it for one, I then get suckered in and, and do it for all. So I'm not going to do that. But um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of quickly comment on, comment on that, comment on the comments situation. Anyway, so I hope you liked this quick little add-on to our bulk, you know, mass making of the yo-yos. They're so cute, aren't they? I really love those vintage ones and um, definitely I'm going to be including those in things more often. Just going to pull in that same piece of paper there that I used for the bright coloured ones just to show you how they look. Aren't they pretty? Really, really pretty. So, yeah, I mean, that's how they look, obviously, stamped ones. But, I mean, obviously, I don't think we actually, we haven't done the plain one. Let me just quickly do the plain one just to show you how the plain one would look. So, I mean, I'm sure you can all picture how that would look. But I'll just very quickly do that. I'm just aware of how long, because I'm thinking I might upload this on the same day as the mass making. I'm not sure. That might be an overdose. Perhaps I'll upload it the next day. Yeah, that's probably better. That's probably better, to be honest, because those mass making videos are pretty long, aren't they? So then if I were to upload this as well, that would be, that would be quite zapping. Although, like we say, you know, we're all maybe looking for things to watch at the moment. I think I already said that my son straight away said, oh, we'll, um, you know, do a subscription to Netflix. Um, you know, like on the free trial. So we're going to do that. Haven't done it yet. There's still some things to watch on um, Prime at the moment because they seem to have added quite a few things recently. So, you know, we have still got things to watch. But once once that runs thin, which I'm sure it will, then we will do one of those free trials to Netflix, which we do do those from time to time. I mean, to be honest, like all these things, I mean, once you've sort of watched them, you know, it's not really worth having the subscription. And they just seem to circulate the same films you know, for a few months they're on like Netflix and then for a few months they're on Prime or any of the other channel-y things that you get now. So, um, yeah. But I mean, obviously, you know, the kids love love having those things. Okay. So let's find a nice button for that one. I mean, actually, to be honest, I have used those buttons with the shanks before and then you just forget, don't you, what you've what you've found works and what you don't. But, you know, actually, to be honest, this is quite a good use of those buttons with the shanks that sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I might struggle to use them otherwise. So um, these are quite a good one to use. Now, for this one, for instance, this has got quite a big shank on it and this is quite a flattish yo-yo because this is just from that um, duvet cover or pillowcase, I think they were covers. Um, which obviously, you know, do not make the thickest or fattest yo-yo. So what you could do, if you have a situation like that, I'll just trim that down. If you have a situation like that where the shank is a little bit on the long side, you know, to poke in, it's still then sticking up a lot out of my flower, if that makes sense. So what you could do there is snip that off. So I'm just doing that over my bin. And then what happens is often you don't manage to get right to the bottom of the shank, if that makes sense. But that's okay because that's now flat enough to be able to stick onto my my yo-yo. 
So, you know, that's just another little sort of tip there, really. And actually, I'm just wondering whether to finish that off further. And now I'm looking, I can't see any. Whether we could just have a little tiny piece of lace just in there. Ooh. So I'm just going to cut out, in fact, before I cut that out, I'm just going to ink that up a little bit. Like that. Oh my gosh, I got stuff stuck all over me. Okay, so we're just going to cut round there. Like that. Oh, that's that's monstrous, isn't it, for that? Let's make that so much smaller. Oh, come on. Right, so what I'm thinking, stick your lace piece down there and then take your button Just pop that on top there. Okay, let me just get rid of that off the table. And then what you can do is obviously go round the edge of your yo yo just with your distress ink, just to just to emphasise it a bit more. There you go, so that's your completely plain one, which looks gorgeous, doesn't it? Really, really pretty. So, yep, yeah, I'm loving the vintage, vintage yo-yos now. So um, I'm converted over to the, the dark side with those. So I hope that you enjoyed that little video and I will see you all again soon. Stay, stay well and take care. Thanks then. Bye.